Rui Hachimura is developing into an exact replication of San Antonio Spurs' Kawhi Leonard. The teams have the tiebreaker and the other is going to go to conference. Breaker down! Oh my goodness, Hachimura! Here's Curry on the drive, the floor. Oh, mama! Back the curve. Most insane part is, the Lakers only had to give up Kendrick Nunn and a few future second round picks to receive Rui. After posting 20 points, 12 boards, and 3 blocks, it's evident this man knows exactly what his Laker coaching staff expects from him. One, they want me to impact on the defense side. So, you know, I've been, I've been watching a lot of film with the coach, you know, and uh, I think it's been, it's been great for me. You know, I've been learning a lot of stuff. We know how LeBron reacted to that type of player when he had to face him back in 2014's finals with Miami. Now the rest of the league has to deal with that. Not only Rui's defense, but his movement without the basketball and lethal stroke from 10 to 16 feet away from the hoop makes him an incredible fit in this seeming to be championship caliber Lakers system. We'll break down Rui's production, AD's beastly 40 piece, LeBron's record setting versatility, and more. But just 8.6% of you watching are subscribed, so please subscribe, also hit thumbs up, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference, can't thank you enough for the support. The versatility to either be the roller in the dunker spot or the creator off the dribble from LeBron James is extremely tough to guard. LBJ just passed Jason Kidd for the fourth most amount of triple doubles of all time. Before their game in Salt Lake City against the Jazz, Braun had the loudest 18 points that anyone scored in a game this season in Houston. Combine his versatility with his poise and all-time greatest IQ, and James can take over the game in every facet. Speaking to his adaptability, LeBron James is the only NBA player other than Jason Tatum of the Boston Celtics to be top 63 among players in both points per game scored as the pick and roll finisher and points per game scored as the pick and roll creator. We've talked about how the Lakers' pace of play has been night and day less stagnant compared to before the trade deadline last time, and their lethalness in transition continued to be a major theme in Houston. However, D'Angelo Russell's patient surveying makes him the catalyst to that pace management. Therefore, the Lakers were forced to play more up-tempo when D'Lo had to miss the second half of the game against Houston. Vanderbilt collects this transition bounce pass from LeBron with his left hand, elusively gathers it to his right while stepping left to sell the take to his strong hand before Euro stepping and instead reversing it to his right. Anthony Davis continues to resemble the most dominant force that he's ever been, taking it to the bucket with deadly intention by taking full advantage of his generational combination of wingspan, strength, long strides, and guard skills off the dribble. AD's third 40-point game of the season was definitively beastly as it came on just under 80% true shooting. Man also posted nine boards and two blocks. From a coaching standpoint, as a Raptor fan whose coach overplays his starters tremendously, in garbage time, respect the Darwin for not going too ham and sitting down his starters. When your coach is as fittingly egoless as Darvin Ham, everyone gets a shot when the time calls for it, as the third string unit featuring Max Christie, Devon Reed, and Lonnie Walker got some shine in the final minutes. Incredibly, everyone who suited up for the Lake Show had a positive plus minus. An overlooked factor in that win was the former Chicago Bull Troy Brown Jr. In a game most off the bench of 26 minutes played, TBJ was a plus eight and made some great hustle plays whether in the passing lanes or matched up with high volume ISO guys like KPJ, Jalen Green, or KJ Martin. Brown Jr.'s subconsciously exuberant body language gets swept under the rug, but the energy level that he naturally brings to the table is contagious. Now that LA has another guy almost exactly like TBJ with Jared Vanderbilt in terms of his length on the perimeter defensively and engagement in terms of his mentality, Vando and Brown Jr. can vibe off each other and make their exuberant nature even more contagious. One of the many top options that's rubbing off on is Austin Reeves. AR-15 has now scored in double figures in 14 consecutive games. That scoring consistency both says a lot about the type of creator that Mr. Powers can be, 
and means a lot to what the Lakers are trying to accomplish collectively. But by far the biggest storyline entering this doubleheader coming up in Utah, then back to their hometown but still on the road against their fellow Los Angeles NBA team in the Clippers, is the evolving wing phenom Rui Gamebred Hachimura. In addition to TBJ and Vando, you have yourself another forward to add to that position's depth behind two of the game's best players in LeBron and AD. Never losing track of the play, watch how Rui fools the roller by roaming outside of the restricted area up until the pass is completed, then elusively shuffles over and springs up like Zeus to meet him at the rim. His cagey positioning with his timing to collapse the offense, baiting drives that ultimately turn out to be inadvertent, gives the Lakers another element of rim protection. This next play shows off Rui's persistent attention to detail, even after he both gets pinned on the screen and LeBron blocks the shot, he stays right in the action, stays with the double pump fake, then sticks with the play for a third time, albeit after giving up the offensive board, by stripping Abaji clean and recovering the loose ball. Watch his instinctiveness and perfectly timed up strides to get back in this play for another Greek god rise up and stuff, this time pinning it off the glass. Even when slashers are expecting to be met with pressure, Rui's evidently aware of how to ideally go up straight without fouling. On this play, his athleticism, perfect forearm to body defense, and clean one-handed contest is completely overwhelming. Offensively, the albeit bottom-feeding Houston Rockets were aggressively falling for his upfakes, leading to pristine Kawhi-like mid-rangers or thunderous downhill attacks. Isolated, this triple threat move leads into a left-handed drive where he's able to smoothly transition to the post and fade away in traffic with the exact same fade package as Kawhi. How about the Leonard-like handle for his size to go full court with 4.6 seconds left in the quarter and beat the buzzer after an in-and-out move and push-ahead dribble? Overall, as a scoring option that isn't often a priority for the opposing game plan, given the Lakers have so many weapons, that's opened the door for Rui's offensive chops to shine through for Los Angeles. Defensively, it's how he fits the Lakers' needs so well that makes him so effective. With the Wizards, they had rim protectors like Daniel Gafford, Taj Gibson, and Chris Stapps Porzingis. The Lakers, meanwhile, still up to this point given the loss of Mo Bamba, don't have a traditional center on their roster, and outside of Anthony Davis and Wenyan Gabriel, they were very thin in the rim protection department. It's not like Ruby's blocking a ton of shots, but it's his activity level and constant movement like a shark that keeps his advanced statistical value at a top-notch rate. Ruby's 115.2 defensive rating since becoming a Laker would be good enough to rank him just ahead of a reputable wing defender in Minnesota's Jaden McDaniels. It's Hachimura's range and length defensively that can work to eat the opposing team's offense alive throughout the course of a game. When Rui can scope out either the opposing offense in general and or a particular player's tendencies, he's able to read and react at an elite level. Whether it's LeBron, AD, or a role player, What's been most noteworthy from your perspective about the Lakers' recent play? Commenter shoutout for today goes to Shaddy, who says, To me, AD's availability this year, knock on wood, has been the most shocking thing about him. He's played around two-thirds of the Lakers' games this year, which is not what we expected out of him. In those games, AD's been extremely vital to the Lakers, especially with Braun missing a good portion of the season. Davis has stepped up as the leader and led the Lakers to a winning record without LBJ, which saved their playoff hopes, all of which wouldn't be possible without his availability this year. Thanks for watching, have a good day.